And I hate to say it, but it seems like nowadays manual transmission cars are harder to find than the Hope Diamond. Well, not quite that rare. But anyway, here at Ideal, we think that the decline of the stick shift is just an absolute shame. And in this video, I am going to tell you exactly why. So let's break down why this dying breed is so essential to keep alive for all the enthusiasts to enjoy. Let's go. If you're like me, and I know you are because you're watching this video, and if you're not subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button, but we spend hours, days, months trying to find our ideal car. And the one thing that irks me more than anything is I finally find the ideal car. You know, the right spec, the right mileage, the right color, the right year. And then I look at what transmission it has, and it says a robot is shifting it or, or something like that. And the only manual that you're gonna find is in the glove box. And that is just the biggest letdown because you have so much more control when you shift a car yourself. Because if it's shifting it for you, you're pretty much just riding shotgun. And plus, one of the best parts about the manual transmission is that new, it won't cost you any sort of premium. Heck, I'm looking at Jeeps for YouTube Girlfriend and an automatic transition costs an extra $2,500 over a manual. The automatic is a more complicated system, so it costs more, and yet it's less fun to drive, and you have less control, and you don't look as cool driving it. But here is the kicker. I understand that the majority of Americans these days just don't know how to drive a manual transmission. Oh, oops, was your foot still on the brake on that? I think so. Yeah. But it is absolutely worth learning, because with a stick shift, you, and you only are the one that gets to decide how much power is going to the rear wheels or the front wheels or all the wheels. And that's decided by you and not some computer. And so what I've found is that it actually is much safer and easier to navigate in weather conditions like snow or even rain. And if you're stuck behind a slow poke on a two lane road, in an automatic car, you have to put the pedal to the metal, wait for the brain to realize that that's what you're trying to do and it downshifts and then you take off. But in a manual, rev match, drop a couple gears and smash it, baby. And I forgot to mention, having control on perfect road conditions is a benefit as well, because you get to dictate how much gas your engine gets by deciding how much you rev it out, so you can actually control your fuel economy even better. And yes, the newest automatic transmission cars are definitely more fuel efficient than any of the cars of the past. The torque converters and hydraulic pumps on older automatics can suck up a considerable amount of the car's power and fuel economy. So if you're looking to buy a car a few years old, it is definitely better to go with a manual. See, the job the job of a torque converter is essentially transferred to the clutch when you drive a manual, and that clutch is completely under your control. So it's a simpler piece of machinery, and not only is it less expensive to fix, but without the torque converter, it's one less moving piece, and so your engine will run more efficient, leading to better fuel economy. Plus, when your left foot's on the clutch pedal, you decide exactly when you're gonna be in gear. So you could see how this could save a few gas miles here or there. And so it wouldn't be surprising that manual transmission cars can get up to 15% better fuel economy than their automatic counterparts. And I don't know about you, but that's a significant number. That's the difference between 20 and 23 miles per gallon. And over the car's lifetime, those three extra miles per gallon could save you a fortune. Maybe enough to buy one of these 10 turbocharged cars with insane tuning potential. And while the manual transmission could probably save you a couple bucks at the pump, it will save you a bunch of money at the mechanics as well. Have you ever heard about KISS? No, not that KISS dummy. Keep it simple stupid. With the dominance of automatic transmissions, the US market doesn't even realize that we're driving around in these overcomplicated, costly, and difficult to repair cars. In general, manual transmissions are way less complicated than their automatic evil twins. So that means that they're far less likely to break down. And if they ever do, well, it's gonna be a lot less expensive to repair. And that's because repairing these things is a lot easier. And it's essentially something that you could do at home yourself. Because really, the only common problem with manual transmissions is the burnt out clutches. But for just a normal commuter car, these clutches can last hundreds of thousands of miles. On my Porsche 911 even, I went 85,000 miles before I had to replace the clutch. And guess what? I did it myself. And so if I can do a 911, then any car that you own, with the help of a couple buddies, you could get it done in a weekend. And the best part is, well, the interwebs of today. Because even if you don't know anything about fixing a car or a transmission, don't worry, there are 
so many online resources that can teach you how to repair your manual transmission in a matter of minutes. Plus, fixing your own car and in the process learning about how your car actually works leads us to another major benefit of driving a manual transmission. Because here's the thing, we all know a DIY guy. When the washing machine's broken, he knows exactly how to fix it somehow. And when the office copy machine doesn't work, he's down there poking around in the back panels. And then in a matter of minutes, boom, he's got that thing working again. And really the only difference between that DIY guy and you and me is the willingness to understand how things work around you. Luckily, a manual transmission can make it exceptionally easy for you to learn about the inner workings of your car. In fact, it's kind of a necessity to understand your car in order to drive a manual because you're gonna have to understand how your engine feels and responds to different gear shifts. And overall, by driving a manual, you'll just get this better appreciation for what your car responds well to. And then if something in your car should stop working, you'll probably have a better understanding of what needs to be fixed if you understand how your car works in the first place. Uh, I just make sure you want these done. First of all, the headlights. The, uh -huh, the headlight? Yeah, the headlight fluid's a little low. Uh, we're gonna need to top that off. Oh, okay, it is. And having even the slightest of understandings of the inner workings of your car gives you the freedom from the giant companies of the automotive industry. You know, those dealerships that want you to spend a fortune on small repairs that you probably could do yourself. So take back your liberty, drive a manual. And while a manual can save you money on fuel economy and spare parts, it may also save you from paying hospital bills. Let me explain. I've heard of some people doing some pretty ridiculous things while driving an automatic car. You know, eating a bowl of cereal, changing a baby's diaper, typing emails on a laptop, just to name a few. And then of course there's texting and driving, which you shouldn't do, ever. And it doesn't take a genius to know that these behaviors aren't the slightest bit safe. But if you're driving a manual, all of these things become pretty much impossible. And I'm gonna stop you right there. I know that there's some guys that are really good at driving manuals and you're gonna comment and say, oh, those are all possible. And I'm gonna rebuttal and say, well, you should be focused more on driving your manual better because even the best manual transmission drivers could still improve their craft. Oh, oh. Oh, bollocks. And that requires a much higher degree of driver participation and attention to the road. And for us much more novice drivers, driving a car that doesn't have gears that shift for you, you have no choice but to pay attention to the traffic and road conditions around you. Because you know, you gotta be ready to grab the stick at a moment's notice. And so with your full attention going towards the car in the road, the chances of you getting distracted and getting into an accident go way down. Just think about it. Try eating a bowl of cereal and shifting a manual at the same time. I bet you can't. And if you're worried that you'll become an outsider because you're the only one of your friends who drives a manual, you may find that the tables will actually turn on everybody else if you ever decide to go abroad. Have you ever dreamt of taking a trip to Europe and driving on the Autobahn? How about cruising beachside down Australia's Great Ocean Road? Well. I hate to break it to you guys, you're gonna have to learn how to drive a stick. The fact of the matter is, is that most other countries besides the US, they're dominated by the manual transmission. And speaking from experience, it becomes extremely difficult to rent an automatic abroad. And that wasn't that I wanted one in New Zealand, but you yeah, know, you gotta at least ask, right? So think about it, before you buy a flight to Germany and expect to rent a Bimmer that you're gonna traverse the continent in, understand that when you go to the Enterprise or Avis desk at the airport, most of the options are gonna be manual transmission. Yeah, and no one likes a tourist that shows up in a foreign country and then demands that they have to have an automatic because they can't drive a manual. So if I could give you one piece of advice, find yourself a manual right now and start practicing for that well-deserved Euro trip. I promise you will have way more fun shifting your own gears. <laughs> and I've talked about all the practical reasons why driving a stick is the sh but now it's time to talk about that feeling. Ugh, that feeling. When it comes to deciding what kind of car you're gonna drive, it's most certainly important to take a deep look at the specs. You know, things like reliability, the fuel economy, and the engine output. But we hope that since you're watching Ideal, that you understand that driving is more than just that. It's more than just the numbers. It's about the feeling that it gives you, the connection that you have to your car and the road. It's all about enjoying the ride. And let me tell you, driving a manual is a ton of fun. There is literally nothing like hitting that perfect rev match downshift and just hearing that engine scream. 
and I've taught a lot of people how to drive a manual, and once someone gets the hang of it, you see their smile on their face, and the thing that I hear time and time again is that it's similar to playing a video game. And seasoned stick drivers like myself have a long-standing love for the transmission and how well you're able to control the car. And if you think about it, there's a damn good reason why people that have a manual car never go back to automatic. And if they do have an automatic, they have a manual fun car. And it's because stick shifts are the epitome of the ideal driving experience. And if you truly appreciate the art of driving, a manual transmission is the only way to go. So I hope I've been able to convince you how incredibly awesome the manual transmission is and that we have to save this dying breed. And if you're in the market for a brand new to you ideal car, please, 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 please consider a manual transmission and definitely wear your manual T while you drive it because not only will it add like five or six horsepower, but you'll look even better doing it. And if you're new here, my name is Brad Danger. This is Ideal and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell as well because we're putting out Ideal content pretty much every single day. Enjoy those manual transmissions. Viva los manuals transmissions. And as always, keep living the Ideal lifestyle. Let's go, baby. Yee.